this video is proudly sponsored by Newtype. Tools, accessories, model kits, these guys have it. Hop over to NewtypeHQ.com and use the link below to help this channel out for future builds. Hey, what's going on my dudes and dudettes, and welcome back to another exciting build from the good folks from Bendai Japan. So why don't we finally get started with the 144 scale, real grade, MSN-02 Xiong. And without further ado, let's get to it. Yo, welcome back my dudes and dudettes, another unique build from the good folks for Bendai. And if this is your first time to this YouTube channel, Welcome! So can we take a moment and talk about real grade and why I avoided it for such a long time? Me, I specialize in master grades, perfect grades, and everything in between, bigger or smaller kits. Real grades have been in that weird little gray spot where I've been told by a lot of people that the original inner frame wasn't that stable, other areas were prone to breaking, and at the same time, the runners were very, very small, so you could easily lose them, and that was kind of like the key reason why I avoided it for such a long time. But all that changed when I watched the Gunpla talk show's review on this particular model kit and I was immediately fascinated on how incredible the inner frame detail was. On top of that, this particular mobile suit has crazy amount of articulations around the thrusters, the hand has a great deal of articulation, and probably the bonus part, it comes with its own action base. So I was actually very happy to see that, but at the same time I was more concerned with the sticker decals. But after looking at more promotional work and watching more reviews and looking at more um, opinions on this model kit, I felt that it was well overdue to finally dig into the world of real great once again. So without further ado, let's jump inside and see what's inside the box. And as always, you are happily greeted with the instruction manual. Give a nice sexy shot of Zong's eye looking at you very intimidating looking. While the first page give you a rundown on what runners you're going to be expecting for this particular mobile suit, what tools you're going to need. As for the following page, it gives you a complete rundown on how to construct the head and the torso, while the following page gives you a complete rundown on how to construct the torso and put in many dynamic poses. Once again, very, very impressive what I'm seeing for like the thrusters and the inner frame design. It is very much on par with what you would expect from a perfect grade, but just put into something very, very small. Just absolutely incredible. Next page, you're going to get a brief summary of how to construct the three action bases that come with this mobile suit, while at the very bottom gives you a small glimpse of how to construct the mono eye, where do you want to position it upward, do you want to position it downward to look left and right. It's cool that this particular mobile suit gives you options. And on the final last page in the back gives a complete diagram of how to apply the sticker decals for this particular mobile suit, while on the very bottom gives you a complete color chart to do some custom painting if you choose to do so. So, with that out of the way, let's talk about runners. And this mobile suit comes with a great deal of runners that are absolutely spectacular. Right off the bat, you get these nice luscious red pieces for the runners as well as for the classic horns, two different types of yellow pieces for the wrists, and a nice soft yet turquoise blue for the thrusters. Next, we get these like dark gray pieces for the actual arms to be suspended upright. You get a handful of light gray runners, a small selection of violet blue purple runners, and a handful of inner frame pieces. And these particular gray runners are actually like a soft purple, which I love that little attention to detail. And this inner frame, oh my goodness, incredible amount of inner frame detail, which is absolutely spectacular. Three hexagon shaped action bases for the hands to be suspended as well as for the main mobile suit. A handful of inner frame pieces for the main thruster units which I absolutely love. My goodness, this detail on these guys are absolutely spectacular. Good job on you, Bendai. While at the same time wrapping these up with a small sl selection of yellowish orange runners, more sea blue pieces, and at the same time, a very small selection of dark blue runners. As for the clear runners, they're pretty small. You only get the mono eye as well as the head cap for the main head, so you can move it up and down, and a small selection of purple runners. Now, the one thing that's really interesting about this mobile suit is the hands. Now, I've only seen this on, say, perfect grades, but never on something like a real grade or a master grade. It's very interesting that they're actually doing something this small on something this tiny. I think that's great. And then to wrap things up in a nice little bow, we're going to get the sticker decals. Once again, sticker decals have improved a lot for the real grade series as well as a handful of master grades. But for me, I'm going to be rocking out with water slide decals. Well, the time has finally come. I am finally jumping into the world of real grade and I am super excited to finally do this. So as always, before I get started in building this mobile suit, I need to take a step back and evaluate which area I want to tackle first. Since there's not going to be a lot of multiple replicating features on this mobile suit, I think it's best to tackle the waist area because I feel that this is going to require a lot, a lot more love and attention than the torso section because you're dealing with multiple strands of wires for the boosters, as well as areas that are going to be requiring a lot of funneling electrical wiring into one central part. So I'm going to start off with painting the areas first and then work my way up to constructing this guy afterwards.
All right, now that we got the waist section done for the inner frame, it's now time to tackle the most hardest part of this mobile suit, and that is going to be the thrusters. Now, the way I'm gonna do the thrusters is gonna be pretty simple, at the same time, kind of difficult. What I'm basically gonna do is gonna be Dremel a small little hole, like a one by 32 Dremel, and the inner part of the corner of the booster, so that way they have the nice little spot to rest for the LEDs. And then around the back part of these little pre-designated holes, I'm gonna be drilling a nice little hole on the side of it. The reason for that is because when I funnel electrical wire upward, I wanted to go in a downward equal instead of being in an upward. Because since there's like gonna be a specialized design piece of runner supposed to clamp onto those four holes, I wanna make sure the electrical wire is safe so that way it doesn't snap or get damaged. So once again, gonna drill a hole right through at the very bottom on every four corners and then I'm gonna drill a small little hole on the side so that way I can funnel electrical wire through it and then bring it upward. This part is pretty lengthy but it can be done correctly if you know what you're doing. Alright, now that we got one booster down, now it's time to tackle the second one. Now this process will take roughly three to like five and a half hours to do it correctly. You can't rush these things, you gotta take your time. <laughs> Okay, now that I got the main boosters done, now it's time to tackle the thrusters. Now the thrusters aren't gonna be that hard compared to the boosters because you're not dealing with multiple strands of wires. However, depending on where you position the LED is where you're gonna get the effect to look really cool. As you can see here, the LED isn't too deep inside the hole. It's actually protruding just enough outside of the ridge where it's refracting around the actual rim of the actual plastic. So to make that effect work, make sure you pre-spray those areas with a nice silver paint or any kind of metallic paint that will work just fine. Then give it a nice little soft blue hue at the base of it to give a nice little bit of effect and then construct the booster the way it is. Once again, don't rush it. Just take your time when you're building these particular boosters and you'll get it just right.
So this part is 100% optional. I wanted to do something a little bit more unique with these particular circular pieces. So I end up drilling a hole in advance and then sticking in at least two Pico orange LEDs to give it a little bit more depth and feel instead of just being a flat back. Once again, this is just optional. I just wanted to do something really cool because it kind of looks like a face when it's all done and put together. Now that the main waste unit is fully constructed and assembled, it's now time to test out the LEDs. This is something you should really get into the habit of doing when you're constructing a mobile suit because there are issues at times where something won't connect right, something will break, something will fail. You want to make sure that everything works just great before you start putting on the armaments on this particular mobile suit. So as you can see here, everything looks absolutely beautiful and now it's time to put on the final touches of constructing the actual armaments onto this little dude.
Okay, so I mentioned earlier on the video that the hardest part was going to be the waste unit. I was absolutely wrong on that part. Okay, so the hardest part of the Mosu is just about the beginning, and that's actually putting in these very small LED lights inside the fingertips of the Zong's weapon accessories. Now, the hard part about this kit is dealing with all this excess electrical wiring, while at the same time compromising and sacrificing areas that you won't be able to pull off. So having detachable arms is not going to work with this particular build, but the challenges for this particular build is actually going to be trying to funnel in all the electrical wire into these little small peg holes. Now fortunate enough for me, Benda has already taken the liberty of actually hollowing out that area in which you could put in effect parts. I however am not going to go with that route, I'm going to be actually drilling a small little hole, once again 1x32 Dremel, underneath the finger tip and what I want to do is take that particular electro wire and funnel it all the way down to the palm and then down to the wrist so that way I can take all the electrical wire from the hand and then keep it around the forearms and keep it nice and locked and secured once again doing it this method will prevent it from actually being detached but at the same time the results are going to be absolutely phenomenal
Alright, now that we finally got the rest of the runners fully painted and ready to be assembled, it's now time to tackle the shoulder blades. Now with these shoulder blades, I want to take what I've learned from my previous build and install navigational lights on each shoulder. One's going to be red, one's going to be green. Now this particular detail is not really necessary, this is something I like to add on every mobile suit that I build for this channel. But if you want to go the simple route, you don't need to put those navigational lights on there, just keep it simple the way it is and you'll be good. Okay, so this part on this mobile suit is going to be a bit difficult to do, so I'll try my best to explain what I'm basically doing. I'm using a 1x16 Dremel and then filing down that plastic to a point where I can funnel in the electrical wire from the forearm all the way up past the tricep and bicep area all the way to the shoulder blade. So I would really recommend you use an actual filing tool for this method or some sandpaper, but for me, I'm going to end up just using the Dremel because it's a little bit more faster, it's a little bit more efficient, but do it the safer way, use a file tool to do this effect correctly.
Now you're probably wondering why do I have tape on the hands? Don't worry about that. I'm gonna be painting those separately offhand because that's a kind of difficult process to do. What I need to talk about is electrical wiring in the torso area. There is just barely enough cavity space in the upper top. So to make sure everything works correctly, I'm gonna be pre-drilling a hole through these little three pistons. And once the aperture is wide enough, I'm going to be funneling all the electrical wire in that area so that way it's nice and secure. And then take all the electrical wire and funneling down the lower back spine of this area so that way I can reconnect everything to the lower waist unit. This process takes about maybe like 20 to 30 minutes, so don't rush it. Make sure you plan ahead and make sure you do it correctly. My dudes and dudettes, as this video is wrapping up, I want to share with you guys my thoughts and impressions about this mobile suit. And oh my god, I gotta give a huge, huge shout out to the Gumpla Talk Show, guys. Thank you so much for making the review several months ago. If you guys have it, please subscribe to their YouTube channel. They're great, guys. I had zero interest in building this mobile suit for a very, very long time. And once again, I'll say it again. Not, I really wasn't a big fan of building real grades. I didn't want to deal with the small little runners. I didn't want to deal with these areas that were going to fall apart and break. But the real grade technology has actually gotten better and better over the last several years from what I've been told from you guys. And I am just shocked on how beautiful everything is done in this mobile suit. There's even areas on this mobile suit that you'll never see the light of day. And they have a great deal of detail, which is really unfortunate. But my goodness, I was just blown away on how amazing, how intricate this inner frame was designed. I mean, whoever did this was a madman or bad woman. <laughs> I mean, it's just, I was just baffled that this thing has so much detail. And I'm literally kicking myself every time thinking about this as I'm doing my opinion is just, I really wish I jumped on the bandwagon of trying out real great sooner, but once again, the technology wasn't that great. It was there, but it was improving as the years went on. And after building AVA Unit Zero last year, I was just like, you know, maybe it wouldn't hurt to finally jump into the realm of real great just to see what it's about. And I am actually glad I tackled a Xeon mobile suit than a you know, traditional Gundam kit because you know I am not a really big fan of the Mono Eye. I've experimented with other kits with that particular style, but this one really encouraged me to really get in, out of my comfort zone, you know? The engineering on how to manipulate the head to look left and right, the Mono Eye looks left and right, and adding an LED light in there just adds a little bit more extra flair to it. But there are areas that you need to be absolutely mindful when you're doing some custom painting. Thanks to at casual Palmo, 
sorry if I'm butchering your name, he advised me to be very mindful of the undergate or the under part of the main abdomen because that that particular plate would actually scrape underneath the under part of the inner frame. So if you're the kind of person who likes to do custom painting, be mindful of that. I personally didn't have any issues with it, thank goodness, but I was going to do custom weathering on the mobile suit anyway, but for those that are very cautious on when it comes to painting model kits and don't want to have any paint scraping, just be mindful of that and you should be solid. So thanks again, dude, for that recommendation. Helped out a ton. So the bigger question is, is this kit worth the purchase? I, and I am so happy to report that yes, 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 yes. Please, please pick up this kit. I am not being sponsored by anyone to tell me to do so. I am telling you as someone who is a fan of the Gunpla genre. And now I am literally a fan of the RG lineup. I mean, it's great. It has everything I want. It has a perfect grade and a mass grade just condensed in something this small with great articulation and, and great surface and inner frame detail. And yeah, it is a bit expensive, you know, ranging between like 60 to $70, but you know, I get it. That's a lot of lettuce, <laughs> but it's a great kit. I had a lot of fun building it. I'm glad that you do seem to have recommended it to me. Big thank you to the Gundam Talk Show for recommending this to me. But uh, as a community, thank you for finally getting me into the world of RG. And with that being said, thank you dudes and dudes for watching this video. And I will see you dudes and dudes on the next build.